What's up, everybody? This is Jimmy with Trading Decoded. It is December 15th, 2022. It is 4.11 in the afternoon. The market is officially closed, and boy, was it a beautiful day. It was a beautiful day in the trades that I took. It was a beautiful day in helping folks take the trades that they took. It was a beautiful day as far as the levels go. Literally perfect trading day. Um, I took four trades completely stress-free. One of them was a mistake. I knew it, and as a result, I played a little bit smaller of a position. I'll share that with you guys, as I always do. Uh, it is the same mistake that I make the most often, uh, which is shorting in the hole, as they like to call it, uh, basically buying a put at a support line later, not much later, but later that move ended up going to where I wanted to, but I stopped out like a responsible person before that happened. So, but I'll share that with you when we get there. I ended up green on the day, 760 bucks with very little effort. Um, we had a massive, massive win day for us. I think the poll right now is four wins to every one loss. Uh, as far as the community goes, it was an amazing day. So let's go ahead and launch the charts and get into this. Right off the bat, we were trading, uh, we gapped down, first of all, uh, from overnight session, okay? Uh, I plotted my, my four targets high, or sorry, three targets high, one, two, three. And I originally had three targets low, one, two, three. Uh, but as we started to take those out, I added four, five, and six. Whoops, move that. Four, five, and six. And as you guys can see, um, well, we'll see. I only added one additional support resistance line uh, to the day. So all of these lines ended up being pivotal reasons for the trades that we took. But let's get started. So we're chopping in this pre-market range. Uh, pretty tight range, 395 to 396, about $1.20 uh, range that we spent most of the morning in. Um, we have our normal crazy 8 o'clock, 801 candles uh, that took out two of my targets high, so those don't really count. Um, and then we started to sell off. Okay, hey, I wanted to see the pre-market low hold the support. It didn't. It be became resistance, which was nice. Okay, we start moving down. We hit our first target low. It acts as a bit of a support. We're clearly trending down, lower highs, lower lows. If we pull back up, that pre-market line becomes resistance once again. This is where I'm feeling pretty good. I tell everybody at open, I'd be a, a put buyer if we reject 395.02 again. The market opens, we get up there on the first candle, didn't touch it, we get up there on the second candle on this wick, I, I, a lot of people took the trade starting here, okay? I didn't personally take it, many folks did, and they made good money. That was a nice, clean trade. I told everybody I'd be interested in puts at 395.02. If it held as resistance, I'd also suggest taking profits at this line, if anything, down here where we found the low of day in pre-market, okay? Either way, you still made good money on that. It's a nice trade. However, I trusted that this line was going to hold as resistance. Okay, I jump into 20 puts here. Why? I felt pretty good about the move of the day continuing down. I mean, boy, well, we were right, but we won't get into that. Uh, that brought me just a little over my $2,000 threshold as far as um, um, you know what I like to spend per trade, but not by much. I paid $1.20 uh, for them, and um, I would have loved to have seen us uh, see the trade all the way through down here. Now, why did I take my profits where I took them? I ended up closing these out at $1.45. So this was a $500 trade for me in uh, just over a minute. I bought at resistance for $1.20. I sold at $1.45. My goal was to make it down to here where we found these bodies closing. Okay, we found support here, here, and here. I wasn't gonna screw around and wait to see if it continues down, okay? Yes, the signs were telling me we were moving down, the nine was pointed down, the 20 was pointing down. Um, I didn't have a chance to draw this trend line yet because I didn't draw it until this candle here. But long and short of it is, 
nice quick trade, nice way to start the day. That was a five, $500 trade. I almost made that my only trade of the day, but I didn't. So <clears throat> we start to move down. We find support on target number two. We don't spend a lot of time there. Uh, theoretically, that same area that I got out of my calls or my puts on, which was a support line, acted as resistance when we got back to it. This could have been a flag play. Now you could have taken this, but the move would have only been to this line or to the start of the flag or however you play your flags. I'm very specific about how I play my flags. I also much rather take them at a line of resistance. Okay, that's just me. However, once we put in this wick here, I pulled the downtrend line and I was telling people, if you're gonna play puts, clearly we're moving down, just buy them at the trend line. Buy them at the trend line. Don't buy them at support. Don't buy them at the bottom of the candle. Buy them at the trend line. So when you have a pullback, you expect the move to continue down, enter there. It's cheaper to buy puts there. You immediately start getting into profits if the trend line holds, immediately. You get out if you break above the trend line. It's that simple. Don't deviate from the plan. And I'll show you an example of this later when people ignored that suggestion and cost themselves money. Uh, so we start moving down, moving down, moving down. Again, break and retest, line to line. Target number three gets hit. We, uh, we continue to move down. We come back up, we retest target number three, right down to target number four. Uh, all of these lines came from previous trading sessions. I had to go back and look for lines of support because my Fibonacci pivot point lines stopped like here. Uh, so I had to go find these myself and they ended up being really accurate. Um, so we get down, we double bottom here. I was like, hey guys, careful, double bottom things, do do double bottoms, do double bottomy things. You know, we have fun with that. As we start to pull back, as we start to pull back, um, you had the opportunity for not one, but two flag plays, okay? So uh, we were moving up, you could have bought a flag here. And now one of my rules for flags is you'd like to take it down to the start of the flag unless there is a line of support in between your target and your entry. This line would have been my target to get out. So this would have been you selling into momentum. You don't wait for the line to get touched. Look at what happens when you wait for the line to get touched. It gets touched and man, that thing can rocket ship in the other direction so fast you can't get out of it. Okay, sell into momentum. That's number one, trade number one. If you held out, okay, we broke the trend line. Okay, we broke above it. We come up to a resistance once again, proven resistance. It's it's a resistance line from previous trading sessions, so I trust it. I didn't take this trade. Again, I'm still on the fence contemplating still only having that one trade of the day. I'm pretty sure that most people out there would be completely happy being up $500 in the first five minutes of the day and walking away. Sadly, a lot of people don't, but I was contemplating it. So anyway, resistance, resistance, resistance. We break the line. You could have played that all the way down to that same support. Clean, never would have been red. It makes it down, nice play. A lot of people took that. We move back up. Once again, another flag opportunity. Now this time you have to be careful, right? If you bought here, you would need to know where your stop loss was, okay? The way I trade, my stop loss, if I was trying to get into this trade, like on this candle, or you would have waited for a red candle at least, would have been just above these candles. So I would have gotten stopped out had I tried to be aggressive on my entry on one of these two candles simply because here, okay? This was a proven resistance. I moved my stops just above it. Now, what you could have done is waited for a break back below that and then got in and taking it down. Uh, not really a flag, you're just buying puts at resistance and you're taking it down to support. So uh, that, that was a clean move. Now, where is my first mistake? This is it. I expect this move to continue down. 
I want to see us break the double bottom and continue down to the next line here. I didn't draw this line until a little bit later. So this line wasn't here. I just had a yellow line here and here. I bought puts on a pullback below this line, okay? Knowing the bottom of the day was there, I bought it in hopes of continuing down, okay? Hope being the key word. I basically bought puts on support. I bought, I only bought five because I knew I was breaking rules. I even said to everybody, hey, <laughs> taking a small position because I know I shouldn't be doing this here, but I do believe the move is going to continue down. Uh, I paid a dollar twenty for them, and I put my stop loss at a dollar ten. Five contracts, fifty dollar loss. Second candle, and right, literally the candle after I got in, it stopped me out. So we pull back, okay? We find resistance where at support and resistance here, support. Okay, these lines you just look left. Not only that, I was able to then pull another trend line down from here. Okay. We move down, we get below that support, we move down, we pull back, we move all the way down to what would have been my target for that move. You win some, you lose some, you gotta have confidence, buy puts at resistance, not at support. It's the mistake I make most often, okay? I knew I was doing it this time, so at least I kept it small. Doesn't make it right though, doesn't make it right. We start moving down, we pull back, we draw the flag line, say, okay, if you guys are gonna play a flag, we're coming up to resistance. Now resistance in this case is the downward trend line, okay? We stop there on the green candle, we start printing a red one, there's your entry, I took it. Now, I didn't wanna play around with this, I don't even know why I took this here. Um, Again, 10 contracts, uh, $1.35. And uh, <clears throat> I think because we were struggling to move down based on this green candle here, um, I, I just, I don't know. I, I, I know we found support there temporarily because we found resistance here before uh, and kind of support area here. So I went ahead and locked in the profits at $1.46. That was a $110 move, uh, but clearly, um, buying in at the right time up there, I was really never even in fear of being down on the trade, um, except for this candle here. And we ended up making it all the way down to our target. Uh, a lot of people hung in there. I'm thankful for that. Um, I'm trading under the pressure of knowing, not condoning, but knowing that other folks are taking the same trades I am. Okay. I know a lot of these people can't afford losses, which is an unfortunate thing to know. It's very hard for me to get around. I'll be completely honest, okay? Many times in something that I'd be gladly willing to risk on, I am not risking it on because I am wanting to lock in profits for the folks who are learning from me, okay? Until you do it, you can't tell me it's easy. Just forget about what other people think. Forget about what, what's happening to other people. It's accounts, they're grownups, they're adults, they're pushing the buttons, yada, yada, yada. I'm a human being, okay? I've been in the money struggle before. I know what it feels like, and I don't like to be responsible for folks who lose money. So when I see a little bit of weakness, I already know that, hey, I'm up a good amount. These are up X percent. That's a good trade for, for, for anybody. Go ahead and take your profits. Now, that being said, if they're trading their own plan, the entry was perfect, the exit was perfect, if you waited till the target, that's it. I don't like to take losing trades. So I told everybody here, if anything, and you're unsure of where you stop yourself out at, make it at the trend line, make, make the trend your stop loss. Okay. If, if you want to lock in profits, move your stop loss down with the price. So you're creating your own trailing stop, whatever you got to do to feel better about staying in the trade, do it. I'm responsible for hundreds of people. Okay, I know I'm not really, but I feel like I am. So I'm trading as if hundreds of people are following me. That's just the way I am. Don't 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 hate me for it. Uh, but anyway, the, the trade ends up playing out perfectly down to the target, and uh, we get there. We start to trend back up once again. 
Another potential flag play. Now this one would have been quick. Okay, we got the break. You would have had to been aggressive. Uh, still a 12% move right there, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I didn't take it, uh, but we, we, we spoke about it. We find support. We move back up to resistance at 390. We pull back. This is when I pull a trend line. Okay, we are putting in higher lows. Okay, we acknowledge that. So we got to be careful on the put side of things. You don't take puts in an uptrend. I know we're trending down overall in the day, but I call these micro trends, okay? Flags, big flags on the higher time frames, whatever you want to call them. It's a move against the overall direction of the market. Once you start putting in higher lows, you got to be aware of that and stay away from puts because that's how I burned myself uh, on the last, those three days that I was struggling. Same exact problem. I'm not making that mistake again. Uh, so we've, we, we, we're holding the trend, we're holding the trend. Now, when we got up to and almost touched this level of resistance at 390.54, this drop here was nice. It wasn't, uh, you know, and the fact that we didn't just bounce back up off of this trend line when we hit it gave me the confidence to, co combined with all these wicks right here, okay, selling pressure was there. The sellers came up here to knock us down. We had a bunch of people take puts up here. I took them with the break of the trend. Okay, once we broke below this, I once again took uh, 10 puts at 90 bucks a piece. Sorry for the jump cut on this, guys. Uh, my OBS keeps freezing the video portion of my streams almost daily now, and I'm not really sure why that happens. So if you see a cut in the video, that's what's happening, and I'm not going back to re-record the 16 minutes leading up to the time that it happened. So uh, where I left off or where it stopped recording was I took 10 contracts here at 90 bucks a piece, and I wrote it down to my profit target, which ended up being $110 at this line. I took that profit. It was a $200 trade, and that was my last trade of the day. Uh, however, we did break down. We had a break and retest, and we continued to move down to our final target on the day. Uh, and a lot of people did take that trade. A lot of people held from this break all the way down there uh, in that trade as well, which is fantastic. They're locking in great, great gains, and I'm, I'm happy for them on that. Um, we were presented with another flag opportunity here. Okay, we had a bit of a resistance here. Again, you find support, resistance. Um, you would have taken this here. Now this, you would have had to have known where to put your stop losses. And this is the important part I was asked today. How do I determine where my stops are? I need to explain this to people because I know that there's a lot of new folks that watch my videos. Um, and I need to, I need people to understand it's not a dollar amount and it's not a percentage loss that I am using as my stop losses. So let me explain where it is. For example, if I was playing this break and retest, okay, we break here, we retest here. My stop loss is going to be based just above this candle wick. So somewhere around here, which happens to coincide with a minor support level. Okay, let's say I... Um, I take an entry for puts here. My stop loss where we had resistance, okay? It was support, resistance, resistance. My resist my my stop loss on this trade is going to be just above this wick on this candlestick. Okay? Why is that? <clears throat> well, I want to use most current resistance as my potential stop loss. Okay? It's not a specific line. It's just where we tried to move up farther and failed to do so. Okay, so if I'm going to get into a put here, then I'm going to give this trade this much room to continue in my favor. Otherwise, I'm stopping myself out. I don't know what percentage of the trade that's going to cost me. I don't know how many dollars worth of the trade I'm going to lose if I stop out there. That part doesn't matter. It's a line on the chart that is my stop loss. 
and I don't use mechanical stops, so don't ask me, how do you know exactly where to get out? When we get to it, okay, I say, okay, I'm getting out of the trade and I will get out, whatever the price is. Um, but that's how I do it. So in this case, if you were gonna play this flag, right, your entry would be a break below the, the flag line and your exit would be, or your target would be the support line. So if I got in here, where would be my stop loss? Right there, just above that wick. Okay, not far above it, doesn't have to be far above it, just above it. Give the same sellers that kept it from going higher here a chance to protect that zone again, just outside of it. Now, if you took this trade and you had that as your stop loss, well then all of a sudden, these candles don't stop you out. Look at where these candles are in relation to this. We're looking to get out up here. Okay, we had a decent amount of room to go to get stopped out. Stop losses should cost you money, okay? Meaning you're going to take a loss on a stop loss unless it's a trailing stop. So don't put it in a place where it's so tight that it locks in even or profit or, or very little profit but, sorry about that. I just had uh, my wife come into the room, so I had to pause the video. I'm not really sure where I left off, other than I'm just gonna pick it up and wing it because at this point, this video has gone to hell anyway. So, um, but anyway, you would have had plenty of room to stay in this trade. You would have got out at your profit target all as well. Stops are important, okay? Know where to place them. I don't recommend using a percentage as your stop loss or a dollar amount that you're willing to lose, okay? If your entries are good, your stops don't need to be far behind. It's really that important. Um, and it's that simple, right? So <clears throat> let's move forward. We find support here, we're pulling back, we're finding kind of resistance all in this same area. We get down to support again, we pull back, we call out a flag play once again, here we are up here, resisting the same thing. You take your entry, you write it down. Now here is where I drew an obnoxious note on the chart. I have this on the chart because people in this trade were wondering what to do. And I said, you know what guys? If you're not sure when to exit or you don't feel like we're gonna make it down back down to this level, our target would have been down here. Let me pull a trend line for you. Get out at the break of the trend. Get out at the break of the trend. These people got in either on this candle here or this candle here. Okay, once you get down in here, you're in profit, nothing to lose. If you have a hard time determining when you get out of your trade, Use the trend line that I'm drawing for you. Get out at the break of the trend, okay? So this is where I recommended that they get out, right here. This was the biggest amount of profit they would have seen in that trade short of here, okay? So you still could have locked in the most you were ever going to see on the trade if you took it here for the future, meaning you missed the best opportunity here. Understandable, fine, you're aiming for this target. When do you take profits? When does this sideways trading become a reason enough for you to say, you know what, we're having a hard time making it down to my target. Maybe, just maybe, I should not worry about who's gonna win this fight and lock in the profits I have. But no, no, people are greedy. People are greedy and they say, oh no, no, I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna hold. And they hold through this, a reasonable reason to get out through this. They even get a second chance, albeit less money than it was before because of theta. Oh no, this gives them the hope that we're gonna continue down. They don't notice that we've built a little bit of a support level here. Just look left across these crosshairs, okay? Support, 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 support. Okay, yes, we dip down. 
a few times, touch the line, wins enough enough. Okay, you gotta have rules. If you don't follow the rules, then what happens? You end up selling your puts that you bought here all the way up here when you had a $38 win to now a $38 loss. Oh, but it's only 38 bucks. Oh, yeah? Can your account afford for you to give away 38 extra dollars? What if that happens five times a week? What if it happens 10 times a week? Can you afford to give up $380? The answer for these people, for most of them, is no. I know my audience, okay? Most of the folks in our community are learning how to trade. They don't have large accounts. They can't afford to walk past the money regardless of whether they think it's good enough or not. Use the chart to tell you when to take your profits and when to take your losses. Use the tools available at your disposal, whether that tool is me, my charts, indicators, whatever it is. Listen to them. They don't have feelings, okay? Take your profits when you're supposed to. Take your losses when you have to, when you're supposed to. Have a plan for every aspect of your trade so that you don't get caught with your pants down, so that you don't end up giving up the $38 that may have been 2% of your account. Who knows? 10%? And give it up not only to break even, but to negative. Here. Okay, this is not an I told you so moment. This is a trust the process moment, okay? These lines have been acting as gold all day today. So many opportunities to make great trades today, okay? I took four trades. I took one stupid trade that cost me money, okay? This one right here. All my other positions paid me well, okay? I didn't feel the need to go back in or risk any of what I made today. So I didn't take any more trades. We start to move up. We find resistance here. Oh, we're putting in higher lows now. So be careful. We could move up. I tell everybody. Potentially, if this thing gets beyond 390.40, okay, we could potentially create a squeeze. Now, 390.40, I wasn't going to play anything. I was out for the day became a level that I thought, once we start getting above some of these areas up here, all the people that are keeping us short are gonna start to feel the pain. Now, we had a whole bunch of people above us that, that were keeping us down from all the way up here. So we, we probably needed to dig up quite a bit more to start to make the majority of the market uncomfortable. We never got there. But what we did do is Get right up to this line of resistance, 390. Taking it right back down. Now, again, you can play a bull flag here, right? Bull flag, pull your line down, off the support, right back up, line to line. Some people took that trade. I didn't, I was done for the day. I won't say it again, but not giving up any of my profits, don't need to. Uh, but the opportunity was there. When we get through resistance, Make it up to the next line of, uh, or through resistance, make it up to the next line of resistance. It holds, we move back down to support. It holds, we move back up to resistance. It fails, we move up to the next line of resistance. It's kind of crazy how this works. Uh, mind you, every line on here that has these uh, little timer things on them were there before the, uh, were there before, I'm sorry, were there before market open. These are my targets to the downside. This line right here is the only one I drew uh, during the day, entry day. So to see how they all hold, even being drawn six hours in advance, pretty impressive. Um, anyway, we move up. We failed to move higher here, okay? This ended up being uh, a, a supply zone, apparently. I don't do supply and demand, but I ask when we get into zones like this, when we find a support or what seems to be a, a sloppy support or a sloppy resistance level above or below, but near my, my lines, 
I often associate that with being in a supply or demand zone. And I'll ask the people in our community who do supply and demand, are we in a demand zone? Yes. Are we in a supply zone? Yes. I can spot them. I don't use them, but I can tell when we're in them based on price action. So anyway, this ended up being a supply zone up here. Uh, we move back down, we get back below 390. Okay, we flag back to it. I drew this line, I said, hey everybody, there could be a flag opportunity here. <clears throat> now, what's beautiful about this is that I told everybody if we resisted 390 again, we should make it down to right here. 390, I'm sorry, 389.36 I said, okay? I had an alert there and everything just like this. So you guys can see it right here, that orange line. I said, so if you take the flag, do so at resistance, profit target should be 389.36. 30, yeah, I said 36. It ended up getting to 389.37. So I was a penny off, but people wanted to know, where does that number come from, Jimmy? Again. If a support line fails and becomes resistance, SPY will go to find the next level of support. It's not difficult to find where that potential area could be. It was, if you look in these moves here, just in this section, the number I came up with was because when we moved up here, we pulled back twice right here and closed at 389.36. And then... It became a little bit of support here and here. So my thought process is there was really no other levels of support until there. It should make its way back down to it. Lo and behold, it held his resistance. Where do we go? Albeit a wick, right down within a penny of that area. Nice 25% trade there. Okay, no stress. We start to move up. Now, I did say if that fails, okay, if this line fails, we would make it down to our yellow line at 389.09. So, quick lesson of support resistance. Support acts as resistance. We find support again, the same place as we did here on these candles, right? Higher low. We're looking for this resistance to now fail so that we can have a clear path back up to the next line of resistance, 390.54. We get through it. Would you be surprised if we once again resisted at the same exact spot again that we just did the last time? I wouldn't be. So we get above it. Here we are having a hard time moving higher, resisting at the same exact spot. Down we go. We want this to hold. If it becomes resistance, then what's going to happen, guys? Well, if it holds as resistance, just like it did here, we will find support at level one first. <gasps> Look at this. The candle wicked on that support. This candle closed on that support. Well, that support failed and became resistance. Where do you think it's going to go next? The exact same place that it did before. Okay. The exact same place that it did before. 389.36. We make it down there. Now, I personally would have been out at this point. Okay, it's a line in the sand that worked before. I'm going to trust it to work again. Oh, but Jimmy, look at that. You left another 30 cents worth of the move on the table. I don't care. Come at me when you got a 90 plus percent win rate. All right. And um, so uh, we get there and uh, we end up breaking it. And I did say if we broke it, we'd find our way back down to the yellow line, 389.09, where we spent a solid six or seven minutes. We tried to move back up. Oh, where are we rejecting? Oddly enough, resistance, support, resistance, 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 resistance. If the resistance holds, where are we gonna go? To the next level of support, support. It breaks through resistance and we're gonna try and move back up to the next resistance. Now it doesn't matter because we're going into the close of the day, but it got awfully close to hitting that again. Point is, folks, <clears throat> my lines work, and they're not difficult to draw. What's difficult for some 
is learning how to use them to your advantage, okay? That is what people spend their time in here for, all right? This is the information that I'm sharing during the day is how to utilize these, these lines to your benefit, okay? And it's working. If I'm not mistaken, I'm gonna check the, uh, the poll right here because I'm not really sure what it's at right now. Just launching Discord. Let's go to our let's go to our uh, our red green poll. Hmm, not too shabby. Forty six reds, one hundred and fifty two greens. Twenty five people didn't trade today. Now a lot of folks left early today, so I expect that green number to actually be bigger tomorrow morning when those people that were responsible with their profits and left for the day come back tomorrow morning they come back and hit that green book. But we'll update that uh, when uh, when the time comes in tomorrow's video. But outside of that, guys, we have a tremendously wonderful time during the day, especially on days like this when the majority of our group is making money. Um, it's very educational in there. I don't pat myself on the back for that um, because we have, we have several good people in here that are teaching different strategies, all profitable though. They work when implemented correctly. And we're trying to reduce the learning curve for the traders that are in here uh, supporting us as patrons. Okay, that, that That's the whole goal of our community. It's not to, to have you take the same trades we take. I know people do it, but it's to show you that it works, number one. You know, if I'm telling you that I'm taking a trade before I get into it, and I explain to you why I'm taking it, what I'm seeing that's making me believe it's worth taking, I want you to put those puzzle pieces together so that you can implement them on your own trades, okay? And the fact that I'm sharing these with you in real time is nothing more than proof that the process works, okay? It's not a flex. I could leave out the dollar amounts that I make and I could tell everybody I'm playing single contract positions. It shouldn't matter. The point is that 90 plus percent of the time that I say that I'm taking a trade, it works out to plan. That is what I'm trying to teach you how to do the same thing, whether it's on Tesla, whether it's on Spy, whether it's on Apple or anything else that's not a small cap stock. This methodology works and it's all based on discipline which you have to have in any strategy that you're trading, no matter what. So we're going to go ahead and leave it at that. I had a great day today. I know a lot of people in our community had a great day today. I hope you had a great day today. We're going to wrap it up. If you got anything useful out of this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, we have just rolled over 8,100 subscribers, which is amazing. Next milestone is 10,000. Eventually we'll get there slowly but surely, and I appreciate all your guys' support on that. If you'd like to join our Discord community, where we do have a great time, there is a link down below for that. If you have your first week for free, uh, we've got a bunch of temporary patrons in there right now uh, that uh, that are very quickly seeing the benefit of, of being in the chat room with, with us. Uh, also, if you'd like to become a patron, uh, you've tried it out, you like it, there's a link to become to become a patron down below as well. Uh, it unlocks all the benefits of, of our Discord community, uh, audiobook libraries, live charts of mine uh, while we're trading, and of course, uh, yours truly, uh, talking in your ear sweet nothings all day while we trade. Um, lastly, if you'd like to check out our merch, please go to www.trading-decoded.com. And, uh, and that's it. I will see you guys in the next one. I love you. See ya.